This review is made possible by Napleton Mazda of Naperville. Napleton Mazda of Naperville offers a wide selection of Mazda products that will fit everyone's lifestyle. Start your new car search off right and visit them online at NapervilleMazda.com. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2021 Mazda 3 hatchback turbo. Up front is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four. Down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Guys, I am incredibly, incredibly excited to be driving this car today for a couple of reasons. First of all, as you guys know, I own a 2019 Mazda 3 hatchback in all wheel drive. It's my daily driver. I've put 9,000 miles on it in the last three months and I love the car to death. But this, this is the turbo model. This is the high end model and I'm so incredibly excited. The second reason I'm excited to drive this car is the fact that this is the first year that the Mazda 3 has been offered with a turbo from the factory that isn't a Mazda Speed 3. Back in the mid 2000s, they started selling the Mazda Speed 3. It was a performance version of the Mazda 3. Got a six speed manual, a 2.3 liter turbo. And that's actually the car I learned stick shift on, was a first generation Mazda Speed 3. And so, Will this car live up to that sort of hype? It's not a Mazda Speed 3, but this is the first time that a Mazda 3 has seen a turbo in about six or seven years. And that, that's exciting. So let's get back to that 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four, makes about 250 horsepower on 93 octane, 320 foot pounds of torque again on 93 octane now you can drive this car on 87 but it detunes the engine there is a sensor so you get about 227 horsepower and about 310 foot pounds of torque on 87 octane and so guys this is I, I i've been driving the car for a little bit here but i haven't put my foot into it because i wanted to capture my true reaction here on camera put it up into sport mode i do have paddle shifters but that's not what I'm going to do. All-wheel drive, 2.5 turbo, six-speed auto. <laughs> it doesn't chuck you back into your seat with first gear. But once you let it eat in second, second gear is where it gets you. It pulls hard. Well hard for a Mazda 3. Is this going to break Nuremberg lap time records? Probably not, but it adds that nice, nice punch to the Mazda 3. It definitely adds power. Now, in terms of miles per gallon, surprisingly, the turbo Mazda 3 only does two miles per gallon worse in the city, but the same miles per gallon on the highway as the naturally aspirated all-wheel drive lower tier Mazda 3s. So you don't actually lose any highway MPGs, and that's because the car isn't sitting in boost. It's not really using the turbo when you're cruising on the highway, so it just acts like the normal 2.5 liter that comes in every other car. Now, the interesting thing about the motor is the fact that it's the same block, same bore, same stroke, as the naturally aspirated Mazda 3. It is slightly lower compression and of course has the turbo. It's essentially a CX-9 motor. This motor was actually developed for the CX-9. It's been in the CX-9 for a number of years now, about three years, I believe. And now it's trickled its way down to the Mazda 3. And what was just announced a couple weeks ago is a turbo CX-30 which will be exciting as well. Moving on to the transmission, six speed automatic. There are no CVTs from Mazda quite yet. Hopefully they stay away. I love the six speed. This is the same six speed that you'll find in the naturally aspirated regular hatchback. However, it is geared slightly differently. I'll put those gear ratios up on the screen found on Mazda's website if you are interested in how it stacks up differently. And unfortunately, it is only available in an automatic. There is no manual turbo Mazda 3. You can get this body style Mazda 3 with a manual, but it's only the base model front wheel drive. So if you want the all wheel drive, you have to sacrifice the manual, which is what I did for my own personal vehicle. Last but not least, like I said, all wheel drive comes standard with the turbo. You cannot get a front wheel drive turbo. So let's talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here because the turbo actually adds a lot of nice premium features. This is the premium turbo. You can just get the turbo motor with some of the bells and whistles, but this is the turbo motor with all of the bells and whistles. 
And I'm very, very excited to go through all of that. And again, I want to reiterate, if I seem to be lingering on about some topics, it's because I drive one of these personally. And so I have almost 10,000 miles of knowledge on these cars. And so if I point out something weird, it's just because I probably had to deal with it in the middle of Pennsylvania or Ohio or any of my other trips. So in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the left is my tachometer. In the center is a speedometer that I can change. So hit the info button and I can switch it to what looks like a regular speedometer with a needle and everything. And then I can display my driving information in the middle of that and then back to this sort of radar cruise looking speedometer. This is what I normally drive with. I love this look. I think it looks great. To the right, I do have my coolant temperature and fuel again in regular gauges. These are not digital. However, there are two digital gauges on the outside of that center speedometer for my miles per gallon. On the left is my current MPG, and on the right is my distance till empty, which can be changed. You can choose two different formats for these to look like, or you can turn it off altogether, which I really, really like. If you don't wanna look at that stuff, you don't have to. One nice feature of the turbo is the fact that I do get a heads up display on the windshield, showing me my miles per hour. However, we can come into settings, in vehicle displays active driving display. I can change the height, brightness, tilt. I can turn on and off traffic sign recognition. So when you come up to a stop sign, it'll display a little stop sign. Things like that, really, really nice. And then of course I can restore it to factory settings. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my volume controls, skip track, voice commands, and phone options, as well as the info button will change that center screen we just talked about in the gauges. And on the right of the steering wheel, I do have my radar cruise control options. So this car is equipped with radar cruise. The nice thing about Mazda 3s is that all of them are equipped with radar cruise. My base model has radar cruise and I absolutely love that. The steering wheel also has paddle shifters on the back. Again, something that the base model does not get. And I really, really like this. If you wanna do some more spirited driving, which let's be honest, you're buying a turbo, you're definitely gonna do. To the left of me, there are a bunch of interesting buttons, some of which are exclusive here in the premium. So starting with the far left, I do have my bubble button, I call it. This is for all of the monitors around the car. Radar, cruise, blind spot monitoring, cross traffic alert. You can turn it all off at the push of a button. To the right of that, this is a premium feature, which is the 360 camera. Plus I can hit this button and shuffle through a couple different camera options for the Mazda 3. This is very, very nice and you'll only find this at the top end because there are a couple cameras stationed around the Mazda 3. You can hit this button and view through all of them. There is a front camera as well, which is very, very nice and I'm very jealous of, which is great. I do have my parking sensors off, so if you'll notice in the front bumper, there are actual parking sensor beepers. Again, something my car does not have. And my traction control off button. Then I have two different memory seat settings at the very bottom. Again, a very premium feature that base models do not get. On the door, I have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors, but most importantly, I have my Bose speaker, which is one of 12 different Bose speakers. Again, the base model comes with eight and not Bose. This comes with 12 speakers, a subwoofer, and the Bose audio, which is fantastic. If you can search out a vehicle with the Bose audio, I would highly, highly recommend it. Not because it goes much louder, normal cruising, you don't notice it that much, but the sounds are a lot deeper with the Bose audio. And so for someone who's decently into music, I would say I, I, I like a good song or two. I would prefer the Bose system 100%, and I slightly kick myself every day for not getting the Bose system in my personal car. Moving into the center, we have our infotainment screen slightly recessed onto the dash. It is not a touch screen, however, I have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Premium Turbo gets the Mazda navigation system from the factory. That being said, Mazda's infotainment system is amazing. They updated it for the 2019 model year. And so this is two years old at this point, but it works fantastically. And their old operating system was terrible. I hated it. Now it is great. I love it. Like I said, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, everything you need right there. Down below that, I do have my heating and air conditioning controls. Something to note here is I do have a heated steering wheel as well as front heated seats, which is very, very nice. And I like the minimalist design to the climate controls. I think they look great. They function great, easy to use, easy to see. I like that a lot. Down below that, I do have a USB that is one of two USBs into the radio. 
This is the one that I tend to use, but it's neither here nor there. Then I have two cup holders and the shifter. Now the shifter is out of pretty much every other Mazda, nothing really too interesting there. I have my sport button to the left, and then down below I have a bunch of interesting buttons. On the far left, I have my power parking brake and auto hold button. Auto hold is one of the best features ever. When you enable it and you come up to a stop, like I will do right here, come to a stop, you hit the brake pedal a little bit extra hard, not much force, and a little hold button will come up. My foot is completely off the brake and the car is being held. This is great for traffic. This is great for drive throughs This is great for parking lots. Anytime you're fatigued or tired, this is a great feature. I leave this feature on all the time in my car. And to disengage it, just slightly get on the gas and you're going again. I was describing this to someone recently and they said, oh, like a golf cart. And I was like, yeah, sure. Kind of like a golf cart. Then I have my selector dial for that center screen, has great tactile feedback, it clicks every time you turn it. I have my navigation, music, home, and back buttons surrounding it. Then on the right, I do have my volume knob that can also be shifted left and right to skip tracks. I use this constantly. My right hand always naturally rests by the center console, and so skipping tracks, I just click left with my thumb, it's great, it's brilliant. I love the placement of this volume knob. And down below that, I do have a favorite button as well. Inside the center console, I do have a USB port as well as a 12 volt outlet, and this is where my navigation SD card will go. Now we gotta talk about the seats. Now the seats are genuine Napa leather. They are red. Guys, oh my God, this red interior. I'll talk about that in a second. Let's just talk about the seats. Seats are heated, they are real leather. The base model gets a sort of pleather, sort of fake leather. That's what I have in my car. It looks decent, but this is true leather, ventilated leather as well. And these seats are a little bit higher bolstered than the base model seats, meaning the sides of them are a little bit higher. And so since this car is a little bit more performance oriented, it holds you a little bit better in the corners. The caveat to that does mean that getting into it is a slightly, ever so slightly more annoying than the base model seats because you have to kind of lift yourself up and over the sides of the seat as opposed to just sliding right in. Again, that's such a minor, minor detail. But before we talk about the back seats, this red leather interior, I am a sucker for, for two reasons. First of all, I think it looks great and it's different. You know, a lot of cars have black interiors, tan interiors, the occasional cocoa or brown interior, but this red is great. The second reason I love it, my first Mazda RX-7, again a Mazda, my first car, a 1985, had a red leather interior, and so this gives me a nostalgia of that. It's almost the same color, and I just, I love that. You know, it really reminds me of, of where I came from and what I started with, and it's also from Mazda, which is great. But speaking of the interior, let's talk about the back seats. All right, so we're in the back of the 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo Premium. Again, the red carries on back here, but the actual sizing of the back seat isn't particularly great. My head is almost hitting the ceiling. My knees are smashed a little bit. This is my driving position, but it could be moved up a little bit. I do have a center console, two cup holders again, finished in that same red. What I would have liked to have seen back here is maybe USB charger or not heated seat. Well, maybe heated seats back here, but definitely some type of charger or input or something like that. So if back seats are an absolute priority, if you have a lot of siblings you have to drive around or something like that, I would either look at a Mazda 6 or start looking at their SUVs. The CX-30 is a little bit better than this, not by much. Uh, the CX-5 is really where you're going to want to look in terms of back seat room. And then the CX-9 has a three row and that's that's got room for days. So I can't say that the back seats are amazing, but you know. Yeah. All right, so we're on the back of the Mazda 3. No power lift gate, even at the top trim, no power lift gate, something I would have liked to have seen from Mazda. However, decent room in here. These are the floor mats, of course. Nothing really too crazy back here. These seats do fold down. I have fit an entire filing cabinet in here, um, which fit with relative ease. I have this nice cargo cover as well. And up here, I have this lock button for the rear hatch so I can lock the entire car just from that button. But again, no power lift gate. One thing I wanted to point out on the exterior that I always forget about is these door handles. So you can just slide your hand in and it unlocks 
touch it with the back of your hand and it locks. So the nice thing about it is as long as you have your key in your pocket, you literally just grab the handle like normal and it pops right open. That is a great handy feature that I always use. One thing I'd also like to point out is that the 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo also does come with Mazda connected services, which means you can actually hook up your phone, you can start the car from your phone, lock the car from your phone, check your fuel, tire pressure, everything like that. I do have a separate video fully explaining that app, how to download it and how to use it. So check that out. That'll be at the end of the video. Now we got to talk about the looks. Now, of course, I love the look of the hatchback Mazda 3. I mean, of course. And something that should be noted is the fact that you can buy this in a sedan as well. You can get the sedan as a turbo model as well, which is fantastic. I think the hatchback is better. That's why I chose the hatchback. But something to note about the looks of this hatchback, the front splitter, that is a turbo only option. This is brand new for 2021, that front little air dam splitter. I think it looks great. The wheels are black something that the turbo gets and honestly i'll probably be sourcing for my own personal car i like the look of these wheels better or i might just powder coat my own black it also gets a black arrow rear spoiler so it's slightly different than the stock spoiler you'll find on a, a regular mazda 3 slightly more aggressive and i like that a lot and so that's how you can kind of tell a turbo apart from a regular Mazda 3. Besides the turbo badge on the back, that front air dam and front splitter is really going to be your dead giveaway to the fact that this is a turbo. And I know I said I might put the turbo wheels on my car. I would not put the turbo front bumper because it's not a turbo and I don't want to fake it, but I kind of like the look of the black wheels. My own Mazda 3 is the same color, so I do like the look of it. Now we have to talk about this Mazda 3 in general. Is it a Mazda Speed? three no and i'm sad that it's not however this literally I, I i didn't know that the mazda 3 could get better i bought my mazda 3 because i genuinely felt like it was the best bang for my buck i could get every time i showed someone my new car they got in and said wow this is nice you bought this this is yours which feels great as a 23 year old I, i'm driving something that is way nicer than people assume I should own. And so I've always thought that the Mazda 3 is the best. It, it's just the best right now. But adding that turbo, the 360 camera is huge in my opinion. Heated steering wheel, heated seats. That front air dam I think it looks great, it looks aggressive. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Radar Cruise, those two things are the reason I bought my base model. Memory, I mean this is, this is the best. I cannot complain about a single thing about this car. I really, really can't. And so this car actually does a very interesting thing. I'll see if you can hear it. There, did you hear that? That's actually the sound of me selling my car. I don't, I don't know if you heard it. I don't know if you heard it. Let me, let me get it here again. There. That's the sound of me going, hey, I'd like to trade in my 2019 Mazda 3. That's what that sound is, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Every time you put your foot into this thing, it makes me want to sell my car more and more to buy this. If you were ever a fan of the Portal video games from 10 years ago, Portal 1 was fun. It introduced this fun concept of shooting portals and then you jump through and you had to figure out these sort of mazes and things and how you could do that using portals. That's neat. That's what my Mazda 3 is to me. But this, this is Portal 2. When they announced Portal 2, it was better than the original in almost every conceivable way because it took what was so good about the first Portal game and it just did it more. It did it better. It added good things to it. That's what this car is. This car took a diamond and dipped it in gold. It just, this car just took everything that was good about the stock base model Mazda 3, everything I loved about the Mazda 3, and just made it better. It just made it better. This is the best daily driver you could buy. Again, it's not going to beat an R35 GTR or a McLaren or anything like that, but that doesn't matter. It's quick, it's agile. I can tell you with confidence from driving my own car on twisty roads, that it is an absolute blast driving through the hills and mountains. This thing is a canyon carver. It has great cargo room. You can take your friends. The sound system, the Bose, 
I can't get over it. And so I want it to be clear that I do own one of these personally. I, I think it's foolish when auto journalists try to hide their persuasions, their preferences. And so I want to be clear and honest that I do own one of these. But I own one of these because I've reviewed over 450 vehicles and this is modern enough, affordable enough, comfortable enough, and nice enough. Over the 450 vehicles that I've driven, this is the one that I would take home. This is the one I want to live with every day. That's saying something. Huge thank you to Napleton Mazda for letting me take out their Mazda 3 Turbo. Napleton Mazda is the new name for Continental Mazda. I've worked with Continental Mazda in the past. They have switched owners, and I'm super excited to work on a couple different projects with Napleton Mazda. They are absolutely awesome. The Napleton group is awesome. Everyone at the dealership, they kept everyone at the dealership. Everyone at the dealership is awesome. So same people, same business, same values, just a new name, Napleton Mazda. Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for letting me take out this car. Please go check them out. They have tons of these on the lot. They have a turbo sedan as well as this turbo hatch. And guys, what's not to love? Please go check this thing out. It's just, it's the best. I have no more words. This is the best. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.